But would you pray that all of us, pastors and local, that God would prepare us for the simple teaching of the Word of God that uses all types of learners. Let's, let's bow our heads right now. Let us pray. Father God, this very moment we come to you. Father God, we ask the ministry of the Holy Spirit to please uh, enlighten us. Work on us, dear Father. Especially to Pastor Don, as he imparts to us the wisdom of how to teach our people the best and most effective way, uh, surpassing all the four types of learner. Father God, we pray that you please sustain us with your grace and bless this wonderful meeting that we have, this very precious time with Pastor Don, because we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Now, take, a, take your, another sheet of paper and take another sheet of paper and make these four quadrants. And I'm going to try to teach this. Oh, with God's help, I need lots of help. So be praying for me uh, to do this in a concentrated way. But please make it where it's empty here so you can take notes, but still in this style. Okay? So in other words, when I'm teaching in this teaching moment, I'm going to be starting here and then going like this, okay? But I'm not going to be explaining what I'm doing at each point. I'm going to do this lesson live with you and our pastors. Are we together? Are we together? Okay, so if you have this, I'm erasing this so we have room, okay? And I'm actually going to ask if I can have a scribe that would come and, and help me that would be so nice because I want to focus on teaching and I need someone to be helping me write. Thank you very much, sister. Okay. And can you reach up here? Okay, okay. You're tall. That's good. That's good. Pastors, I've had so much fun this week taking pictures here in the Philippines. All these people, all these, these students come up to me and they ask for their picture and I... They usually ask me, can I sit down for the picture while they stand up? I don't understand why. I, I'm just trying to understand that. <laughs> okay, just for fun. That was a fun thing. Okay, now, put in your box right here, okay? Put in your box right here, live God's word. Live God's word. Now, when you're really trying to disciple someone, be it small group, be it one-on-one, -on -one, make sure that you have prayed about what is the main point you want your audience to walk away with. You know, sometimes we as pastors, I'll pick on myself, sometimes we preach in some way that someone walks away and they don't know the main point. Sometimes, let's don't laugh too much at us. Because sometimes students, let me ask you, have you ever led a small group Bible study and people walk away from your small group, they don't know the main point. They know lots and lots of good things were talked about, but what's the main point? Okay? So make sure when you're discipling, you have a main point here. And ideally, if I can have a marker one second before you be described, ideally, word, oops, did I, I'm going in and out a little bit. Have an action word, okay? Like live God's word. Or trust Jesus. You feel, see what I'm saying? Or keep Sabbath. Pastors, are you with me? Like have your main point that your objective is, have an action word and try to do it in a phrase or a sentence that is like two or three words maximum. This challenges you when you're discipling someone one-on-one -on -one or leading a small group or even preaching or teaching to keep focused on the main thing that the audience needs to walk away with. So the one that I'm going to do right now, I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how to live God's Word. Okay? So I'm going to ask my audience uh, online to please stand. If you have family members there, please stand. I'm going to ask and, 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 and come together. So pastors, if you have anybody else in your home you can invite to join you, this would be a good moment for an activity. Uh, local here, please stand where you are. And everybody should go into teams of twos. Teams of twos. 
Mm -hmm. I'll give you just a moment. Those of you in front of the camera, I need you to come over just a little bit. There you go. Thank you so much. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to give you just a moment. And in teams of twos, I invite you to, I invite you to tell a brief story to someone next to you, to, the, to your partner, of a time when you were so dependent on light. On light. A light? On light. Tell your, your partner, and in your rooms there, your, your homes, I hope you have someone there and your family there to associate with, but turn to someone and tell them a time in your life when you're so dependent on a light. Let me give you a quick, quick example. Like, was there a time when you needed a flashlight? You get the idea. A time when you needed a torch? Is there a time when you needed a light in your house? You're going to tell a very short story about just half a minute long, very, very short, of a time you desperately needed a light. And you'll say what that story is. Please take my mic off, and I'm going to give you 30 seconds each. You're going to have just a minute or two maximum. Go. Let's do the microphone. One more minute for everyone. Testing, testing. Testing, testing, testing. One more minute, everybody. Thank you so much, Pastor. Okay. Hmm? Okay, yes. Okay, uh, just a short announcement. Announcement. Uh, please write your name here on this piece of paper. Uh, you are attending this 9 o'clock uh, session. And uh, we're going to send this to, e to your email, the survey, discipleship survey. Okay, so I'll send it ah. to your email. To our pastors, I'm going to post it in our chat group. The 13 discipleship uh, survey or uh, questions. Okay. Would you like to have that? Yes. Amen. Good. Would you like to have that, pastors? Okay. Now, thank you, Pastor Rex. Okay, everybody. Shh. Everybody needs to have a seat. As quick as you can, please have a seat. Except for you. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> So, uh, I'm going to interact here just a little bit and just put, um, um, just put experience in twos. Experience. Remember, you're taking notes of how you would do this. So, experience in twos. Uh, share. Share a time when you needed a light, when, you do, when you're dependent on light. Share a time when you're dependent on the light, right? Okay, now, you got that? I'm giving you like a mini curriculum, like a mini way you can do a, a, an active Bible study. Okay, pastors, are you getting that? Quadrant one, which we just did. We just say experience in twos, share a time when you're dependent on light, on the light. 
Okay, as soon as you say amen, I'm going to keep going. Some of you are fast riders. Okay, now, uh, for one second. Now, watch this closely, pastors and students. I'm about to do this. When you do this in a Bible study or a sermon or a teaching, you must have a transition. If you can write transition this way or something like this. And this is what I'm going to attempt right now. So watch closely. How many of you online, so turn to the screen everybody, you can look. How many of you online thought of a time when you were dependent on a light? Raise your hand if you thought of a time. Online. Good. Very good. How many of you locally thought of a time when you actually were very dependent on a light? Very good. You know, uh, did, you, did you do something with a light in the story or did you just look at it? Like the story that you just told, did you do something with the light or did you just observe it? I'm guessing that most of your stories about being dependent on light were doing something with the light. Maybe you had to work on the car. Maybe you had to change a tire in the dark. Maybe you had to fix something in your house. Maybe you were on a camp out. In, but the point is, you did something with the light. Now, here's the transition point. Okay? Watch close. This morning, I invite you to join me in exploring how the Word of God is the light. It's not the light just to observe. It's not the light just to hear. It's not the light just to see. It's the light to live by, to be dependent on, to live by with every bone of our body, every part of our heart. That's what we're going to explore this morning in this study. Would you like to explore it with me, pastors and students? So this is right now in a study where I like to pray. Now, I know we already had prayer here for our training, but remember, now I'm doing a demonstration. So I, uh, it's nice actually to pray after you do quadrant one activity because you got the attention. Let's pray. Dear God in heaven, just a few moments ago, pastors were telling stories online to someone in their room, or maybe they're just thinking about a time they're dependent on the light. <clears throat> here on this campus, students and faculty we're sharing some of them with quite a bit of, of life and animation, times when they desperately needed a light. God, if there ever was a time when we as Seventh-day Adventists need to live the Word of God, it is now. And so we ask, Father, that you'd send the Holy Spirit. This is a very short Bible study, and God is not just only demonstrating. I believe every time we handle the Word of God that there is potential for the Spirit of God to shake us up and move us from where we are to where we ought to be for the glory of Christ and not for our own. So please do that right now in this simple study. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, how do you live the Word of God? How do we live it in a way where it's really depending on the Word of God? This is going to be a very mini Bible study, and we're going to check out just a couple of principles on, how, on, on what it means, what it means to live the Word of God. So let's, let's go right to the Word of God right now. And if you can put out just these references as we go. <clears throat> what does it mean to live the Word of God? You know, let's go to the Gospel of John 5.39. The Gospel of John 5.39. In the Gospel of John 5.39, I'm going to ask a pastor... If you uh, would raise your hand, if you'd be willing to read verse 39, please. I need someone to help me over on the screen and to identify. Pastor, raise your hand if you're willing to read this passage. <clears throat> I need someone over there because my eyes aren't good enough to see who's raising their hand. I see a hand right there, though, right in the middle. W wave your hand if you're willing to speak. Pastor, I'm dead. Okay, let's turn it. Okay, Pastor, go ahead, please. Okay, John 5.39. 
Okay, it said here, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. Okay, thank you, Pastor. Now, pastors online, if you have someone in your home, please turn to them and ask them this question. Those of you here locally, please turn in twos to someone around you, just in twos. Here's the question. <clears throat> Two questions. What was Jesus challenging his audience that their focus was not right about with Scripture? And what was he challenging them to make the focus of their scripture? There's their scripture study. Okay, like in other words, what was, what was Jesus, um, what was Jesus criticizing in his audience? And what was he, a, what was he lifting up as the, the true focus of all scripture? So two questions, are we, are we together? So how was he, what was he doing to challenge his audience saying, this is what you're doing, but maybe it's not so good, and this is what you should do when it comes to Scripture? If, you're, if you understand my question, let, raise your hand, both online and local. I just want to make sure we're together. Are we together? Okay. Okay, so if we can turn my mic off, this is going to be very, very brief. And you have just about one minute, just one minute, explore with one other person. Okay, again, I know we only have just moments, so I'm going to go very fast. <clears throat> Pastors, okay, if I can have your attention, please, locally. Shh. Pastors, let's go online. Oh, I just lost my cameraman, so I don't know if we have somebody. Okay. <laughs> okay, here comes Pastor Rex. Uh, Pastors. What is Jesus saying is the main focus of scriptures? What, is, what should it be? Let's start with the truth. What, is, what should be the focus of the study of scriptures? Pastors, if you're willing, raise your hand to speak to that. Okay, pastor. We're coming to you. I thought I saw a hand. Is there someone? Raise your hand if you're willing to speak. Pastors, raise your hand if, some, if you can speak to it. Here we have Pastor Peter. Peter, go ahead. I think we're coming to you. I believe the focus of reading the scripture supposedly is to find Christ. Because in, in that text, search the scripture for them, you think you have eternal life. And they are they that testify of Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ, for me, should be the focus of, of why we read the Bible. Thank you, Pastor. Question to our live audience. Do you agree or disagree? But do we always remember that? No. So it appears to me that Jesus was saying to his audience, you're searching the scripture that because you think that by searching you have eternal life. In other words, it was almost becoming like a work. For the Pharisees, they were reading Scripture so much, thinking that the act of reading Scripture was their salvation. Jesus is saying, what you're reading, the point of it actually testifies to the Messiah himself, which he says is himself, Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, 
The first point we're teaching in quadrant two, because remember we're sharing truth now, right? Are you with me? Factual truth. If to live the truth, what does it mean? It means to, to know what scripture teaches or testifies about Jesus. We must know the Jesus of scripture. We must know him. If we do not know the Jesus of scripture, how can we live the word? Okay? Jesus, in the word of God, the question is, did he teach this way? Or did he just teach true, uh, scripture by itself? Or did he actually teach scripture in a way that would focus on who he was, the Messiah? Let's do a test real quick. Are you ready? Would you like to see this? Yes. Are you curious? Are you curious? Okay, go to Luke 24. Luke 24. This is in the walk to Emmaus. We see that Jesus did a very interesting thing when he was teaching the two disciples that walked with him. Remember when he did the Bible study as he's walking? Are we together? Okay, in the Bible study, uh, we come to verse 27. And again, I'm going to ask the pastor to read verse 27. So Luke 24, 27. <clears throat> Okay. Michael, Michael Diaz. Say it in the mic, please. Okay. My, Michael Diaz. Okay, go ahead, Pastor Michael. <clears throat> Luke chapter 24, verse 27. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Pastor, was Jesus actually doing what he had told people to do? Yeah. Yes, because he explained to the two disciples the scriptures concerning who? Himself. Amen? Isn't that beautiful? I want to ask you, everybody in this room, pastors, are we remembering to preach Christ? Do we teach Christ? Do we lead, do we lead our small groups about Christ? Or are we focused on all the stuff around Christ but not teaching, preaching, leading about Christ. It must be Christ in Him crucified. Amen, pastors? Amen? Amen. Now, <clears throat> what else does it mean to live the truth? Well, why we can say that it's important to live the Word, I should say. And what does this mean? Let's go to the next text. I'm just going to give just a few texts. Let's go to the Gospel of John. And the Gospel of John, go to chapter 14. Chapter 14, we go to verse 6. Uh, this one, we're going to go to someone in our local audience. Please read verse 6. Let's see what Jesus says about himself. He says who he is. Okay, we need a microphone to you. Are you willing, sister? Are you willing? Okay, we're, our microphone's coming over to you. And she's going to read John 14, verse 6. Okay, it says in John 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Yes. So let's say it together. Uh, look at it close. And then we're going to look up and say it together. And we're going to fill in the blank. And Jesus said, I am, and then what? Are you ready? One, two, three. Jesus said, I am the way, way the truth, the truth and, the and the life. Amen? Amen? See, Jesus wanted people to know who he was and who he is and who he always will be. If you want to know what it means to live the Word of God, first know who Jesus is in the Word because he's a living one. He's not just history. He's a living one. Okay? Next thing. Next thing. Go with me, still in John, go with me to the Gospel of John and go to chapter, let me just go over here, just give me a moment. Oh, pardon me, I gave you the wrong one. Let's go to Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, and let's go to verse 24. In verse 24, you're going to see another principle of what it means to live the Word. 
uh, yes, uh, pardon me, it's Matthew, I'm sorry, Matthew 7, verse 24. Matthew 7, 24. Thank you to our secretary here. Can we say amen? She's helping us so that you actually have notes, pastors and local people, for your own little mini Bible study. Okay? Amen? So, uh, Matthew 7, verse 24. Pastors, back to you. If we can have the microphone, go back to you. And we want to know who would read this verse, please. Raymer, Raymer Modilas. Okay. Go ahead, Pastor. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Okay, now, I'm going to do a challenging thing right now for all of us. This is not to go in twos. Pastors online, local audience, I invite you to get on your knees with the Word of God in for, before you and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you from verse 24, just for maybe one minute, what is another principle of what it means to live the Word of God? So this is just a quiet, prayerful moment. It's a reflection moment. I'm going to get on my knees too. I'm going to put my Bible in, on my chair in front of me. And I invite you to do the same. Pastors, right where you are. It's a moment to reflect on this text privately, asking the Holy Spirit to teach us what does it mean from verse 24 to live the Word. So we'll come back in just a minute and we'll compare notes. Just give you one more quiet moment. Let's all be just silently saying, God, send your Holy Spirit to teach us what it means to live the word. Just give you one more moment to prayerfully reflect on verse 24. Amen. Amen. Let's come back to our chairs. Okay, I'm going to go to our students here. If someone can take the microphone, would someone tell us, do you see something in this, this story that Jesus is telling in verse 24? Is there some principle there? Is there some teaching that Jesus gives us that might help us know how to live the Word? Uh, what does Jesus say about the Word in this verse? Who would like to speak to that? I'm asking students here. Just to give us, here we have a sister right over here. As for my realizations, we ought to put them into practice, the Word of God. Ah, yes. We, mine says, therefore everyone who hears these words of mine, and does what? And my user might say, put into practice, mine says, and acts on them, it's the same thing, is like what? A wise man who built his house upon the rock. So our second principle, the first one is you look for Jesus in whatever you're, you're reading. If you don't look for the living one, how can you live the word? We're missing the main point of scripture if we bypass Jesus Christ as the focal point of scripture. Are we together? Are we together? But number two is whatever we discover, we must live. We must actually put feet on or else it's just become a theory. 
What do you say, Pastor? Thumbs up or not? Is that fair? Okay. Now, now we go into quadrant three. Pastors, students, are you willing to do a quick experiment to practice these two principles? Are you willing? Okay. So pause just a moment. Okay. And I'm going to give you a text. Just give me one moment. I'm going to give you a, like this is going to be a mini laboratory and it's probably only going to be three minutes. So I'm going to ask you just to take a quick mind break. And uh, everybody stand up. And I'm going to ask Brent. He doesn't know I'm asking this. Give everyone here a 30-second exercise. And then sit back down. Because I'm going to give you a laboratory. And you're going to have to use your mind and your heart to do it. Okay? You're on for 30 seconds. And then I'm going to give you something. Go ahead. <clears throat> Let's do... 30 jumping jacks. <laughs> yeah, so, so that, you know, our, our heads won't be sleepy. So, one, two, three, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Amen. Thank you, Brent. Let's give Brent a hand. Okay, pastors, students, are you ready for a, a three minute laboratory? Um, pastors, if you have your family or friends or, or your, your spouse, well, I hope your spouse is your friend too, but if you have someone there in your home, then get them ready to do this with you. Students and faculty members, I'm going to invite you to do this in teams of fours, and you're going to only have three minutes to accomplish this. Are you ready? Are you ready, pastors? Okay. Please turn in your Bibles. I'm going to give you very swift uh, instructions. So for our scribe, yeah, thank you so much. You're just going to give, yeah, oh, isn't she doing a beautiful job? Wow. Can you read it nicely? That's beautiful. Okay. Go to Psalm 100. So that's the first instruction. Go to Psalm 100. If you're by yourself, pastor, just do this instruction by yourself. If you're with somebody, do it with them is even better. Those locally, again, you're going to do it in teams of your fours. So here's what I'd like to invite you to do. Okay? I want to invite you to read only two verses. I want you to read verses 3 and 4 of Psalm 100. And look and see what does it tell you about the Lord Jesus. Now, it even doesn't say Jesus. Of course, in the Old Testament, we know the Lord of the Old Testament is pointing to who? Jesus Christ, the first... And last, the best. Amen? So I want you to see what does it tell you about the Lord? And what does it, and what, what um, is something that God is calling you to do as a group or by yourself that you can actually do with this truth that you're reading in verses 3 and 4? So you're going to see what does it tell you, the focal point about the Lord, and number two, is there something you read in verse three and, three and four that you could actually do in the next three minutes, like for real? Something you could actually do. If you understand my instructions, please put your thumbs up, both local and online. If you understand, please put your thumbs up. I need to make sure we're together. Okay, together on the line. Uh, are we good? Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm putting my timer on. You have three minutes to do this, either by yourself or together, uh, if you have someone to do it together with. Three minutes. Hmm? Okay. So, uh, again, some of you are asking what to do. You're reading the two texts first with a partner if you have them or your small group. Number one, you read it. Number two, what does this tell you about who the Lord is? 
What does it tell you? Because remember, that's the first point in quadrant two. We're supposed to see what does it tell you about Jesus, right? Number three. What? Pardon me? No, I'm saying, no, no, I'm saying the next instruction. Uh, is, and then what are, what is God calling you to do? Like practice with what you see in verse three and four. Are you going to practice something? Or are you just going to, to stop with what it tells you about Jesus? I hope you're going to, to find something about the Lord and then you're actually going to apply it and do it right now in these three minutes. So if there's something in that text you could actually physically do together in your homes, pastors, and here locally, apply it and do it right now. So again, I'll start, I'll start over the time. Uh, time, three minutes, starting right now. One more minute. One more minute. Okay, everybody, I'm going to call us together. <clears throat> I'm going to call us together. If you're ready, clap once, please. Okay. Shh. Okay, pastors, going online here. What's one thing that verses 3 and 4 say? about the Lord God because remember we always want to ask what is the Jesus who is the Jesus of Scripture amen so is there anything that these verses say about the Lord pastors who would take that raise your hand if you're willing to answer that question raise your hand please if you're willing
Pastor Alfredo hasn't had a chance yet, right? So we'll start with him. Pastor Alfredo. And then we'll go to Pastor Israel. Please just give short answers. It's just uh, one thing only about what it tells you about who the Lord is. The Lord is our God. He is our creator. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Pastor Israel, uh, do you have one more to add that you see in that passage about the Lord or not? Yes. Uh, the Lord is our creator. And... Uh, uh, we are his people, the yes. sheep of his pasture. Amen. We, uh, the Lord is our pastor. Amen. How, how many of you are thankful that Jesus is your pastor? Isn't that awesome to think about? I'm thankful. I love that. So personal. Now, everybody, I'll ask someone local here. Oh. Uh, Remember, Scripture is not only to, well, it's first and foremost to lift up Jesus, right, as the focus. But then we're supposed to do what? Practice, right? Am I right? Practice the truth. So what is God calling you to practice in verses 3 and 4? I'll take two students that will, that will please apply it. So I'm looking for a practical answer, okay? Okay, we're coming over to Mike. Yes, Mike. What is God calling you to practice what you read? Uh, to remain humble and know that he's the one that created. Ah, to remain humble, yes. And to know he's your creator God. Thank you so much. Will someone else tell me, what are you going to, to practice with this? Okay. To be thankful that he is our God. To be thankful. Amen. Now, thank you very much. To be thankful. Now. When you're doing quadrant three, you don't only want to ideally ask them what they're going to practice from this, but you want them to practice right then. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you an example of how you can ask them to practice. You already told me online, we had two pastors say who they found the Lord to be. So that's good. That's, that's practicing it. And I asked you what you're planning to practice out of this. But now I invite you to do something online and here. And I need you to jump up and do this as fast as you can. It will probably take locally and abroad, if we do it really quick, I think we can do it in two minutes flat. So uh, please stand. And pastors, right where you are, you can do this in your home. It's very doable in your home. I'm going to actually give you a practice moment in this Bible study. In scriptures, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Right now, as fast as you can, here locally in the church and in your homes, please run outside a door that you see, the gates, and as you come back into the door, thank God for one thing, but when you get back into your living room or here into the court of God, I want you to just look up in the heavens and out loud say, God, I praise you, and say one thing that's awesome about God. Okay, right now. So I invite you right now, go, go outside, pastors, go out of a door, and as you come back into the gate, thank God for one thing, but when you come back inside into the courts, praise God for one thing, for who he is. Huh? You can go try it right now, okay, so you can have fun. <laughs> If you can uh, see them coming through there, that's wonderful. So remember, you're coming in with thanksgiving, and then you say out loud, you're praising God for one thing you love about Him. Something about Him, not about what He does for you. You're saying, God, I praise you like, because you're beautiful. I praise you because you're kind or whatever. I praise you because you're all powerful. Something about him. Amen. As soon as you come back in, pastors, into your room, please have a seat. And local people, please come back to your seats.
Okay? And so if you can write that, yeah, yeah. Just really, just really briefly. Just for example, say example. Uh-huh. Okay. We're almost back in. Those of you who are coming in, remember when you come into the courts, you're supposed to look up and out loud praise God for one thing. So please do that as you're coming back in. You're saying, God, I praise you for, and fill in the blank. Some of you are looking at me like, I'm going to be quiet. Okay. Pastors, did you try that? Now, do you see how we just went from simply teaching the Word of God to practicing it right then? Is, is this clicking, pastors? Thumbs up? Students, what do you think of this? Now for the moment in the study we almost never do. Usually we like to close with a study and I tell you what, right? Like if I'm doing the Bible study. But instead of telling you, uh, and it's not wrong to give a challenge, but you want them to also, what? Own the challenge. So now, pastors online, and you can do this with your spouse or family if you're watching, those of you local. I want, this is a private moment. And... Um, do we know the song, Thy Word? Yes. Thy Word is a lamp unto my... Okay, so I'm going to give you just, just uh, about 90 seconds, about a minute or two. I invite you to get on your knees. And while you're on your knees, I invite you to ask God this question. What if I actually lived God's Word every day in my life? What would I be doing if I actually lived God's Word? Okay? So in other words, what does it mean to take these principles that you have learned today, that we taught from the Word of God, what if you actually live these every day? Every day you're looking for Jesus. Every day with something you read, you're actually trying it out. You're practicing it right then. How would your life change. What would it look like if you actually did that? Okay? So I'm actually asking you to apply this lesson to your own context as pastors, as students, as administrators. What is God calling you to do with this lesson today? I'm not looking for cookie cutter answers, right? So Brent is in high school and as he takes a minute or two to pray, the Spirit of God may give him a, a directive, an idea of what to do next with these principles that looks different than dad's, which is going to the university or to a pastor in the field, right? Right? So apply it as the Spirit of God impresses you to apply this, not for somebody else, for your own life. I give you just two minutes, right? One or two minutes. I'm going to ask this group, do you know this song, uh, that word? If you can get the microphone and in just in um, about two minutes, I'm going to ask us when I nod, we're going to start singing the song, and we'll all sing together, pastors. Okay, let's go to our knees right now, and uh, have your notebook in front of you, your notebook, and ask God, how does he want you to apply this teaching to your daily life so you are living the Word of God? This is private reflection, and then we'll sing the song.
Again, just one more moment in private reflection. We're saying, God, send the Holy Spirit to teach us what do we apply from this lesson to our own daily living of the Word. So just a few more moments and then we'll sing the song together. With our heads bowed and prayerfully, I invite the pastors <clears throat> to follow the students as they lead us in the song, Thy Word. Just with our heads bowed or eyes closed, we're singing it just softly to God. Thy Word is the lamp to my feet and the light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let's sing it out. <clears throat> Let's sing it out, sing it out. Okay, we can all sing the next part, thy word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. Now, let's come back to our seats. I'm going to ask for a local volunteer to come and bring their chair up here. Someone that, that knows that the Spirit of God has given them something very specific to apply from their life on a daily basis so that they live the Word of God. Like, what are they going to do next? So if you're willing to share uh, what you're going to do with Quadrant 4, like what are you going to do out of this lesson today? Please bring a chair right up here and I'm going to interview you just real quick. It's, I'm just looking for a simple, practical answer. Okay? Who, who has a conviction of a next step of how you're going to apply this to your own life? I want someone who has not already been answering this morning. Who would come? The moment is almost to pass. I need to have a volunteer. Be bold. But not all at once. I need one volunteer, please. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Uh, and let's see, is it Mark? Okay, thank you, Mark. Okay, Mark, <clears throat> what is when you got on your knees and were praying about these teachings, what is the Holy Spirit impressing you to do to apply this to the way you live the Word daily? The Holy Spirit impressed me that if I live the word daily, I have nothing to worry. Amen. Amen. And also, if I live the word daily in my life, I am at ease. Amen. So every time, everywhere I go, whatever I do, I am at ease because God is with me. Amen. Now, one more thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you a little bit more. Is that okay? So... Mike. Mike or Mark? Mark. Mark. So Mark, what, do, what does this look like practically for you? And I agree with what you said. Amen? Amen? He's giving us the effect of living the Word. But what are you going to do practically so that you live the Word of God with the teachings that, that our secretary just wrote up there from the Word of God? What does this look like in your, like tomorrow when you wake up? What are you going to do in your own context? First and foremost, have a connection personally with Him. 
at night prepare myself for tomorrow's duty not not to do my duty in a, in a living world but to connect with him first in the first place right in the morning amen okay so you're going to connect with him first when you go to the word of god how what are you going to do out of this lesson so that you actually live the word of god share share it but what about for you before you share it um, how are you what are you going to do with the word of god itself when you read it are you going to look for what's your focus going to be what's your what's your what are you going to do with it meditate on it and um i will feed up myself first mm -hmm. pastor and um that's it. I will feed up myself to, to connect to connect to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So our brother here, Mark, is saying he's going to make this his first thing. This is one of the things he's taking out of this lesson. He's going to make the study of the Word of God his first thing, right? He comes to study in the morning. And, he, and he, out of that, he wants to share it with others. And so if I was in a small group setting, if I'm discipling Mark, he's my next door neighbor, with what he is telling me he wants to apply, that he's impressed by the Spirit of God to imply, this is what I will ask him next week. I'll ask him about this. As a leader of the Bible study, as a disciple maker, I might also tweak it a little bit. I'll show you what I mean. Mark, I love it that you are saying that you're under conviction to make the study of your Bible your first focus. Can I challenge you just a little bit more? That when you're making the Bible your focus, that you will look for Jesus Christ as the center. Whether you're in Genesis or Luke or Revelation, you'll make him your center. And you'll always ask, Lord, what do you want me to do with this truth before I walk out the door? We, are you willing to do that along yes, with pastor. what your impression is? Yes, Pastor. With your conviction, may I ask you about this next week? Let's just say, you know, I'm here next week. I mean, I'm, hopefully I'll be in Canada next week, but, but for instance, for example, see, I ask him about what he's agreed he's going to do. We need to do this in our small groups. We do not build disciples by sending Mark out and just saying, well, I'll see you next week with no clear challenge. How many of you have ended a small group with no clear challenge? Pastors, have you ever done that? I have. I've sometimes ended with a nice inspiration, but no clear challenge, not a, a next step. Make sure that the step is first owned by him. Just like Mark said, this is what I'm impressed to do. That's good. What he's impressed to do has a, the strongest possibility of him following through. But then because you're also a disciple maker, tweak it a little bit and say, could you also, based on the word of God, do this with your, with your conviction? If he agrees... Then say, I will pray that you'll do this. Do the challenge. Yes. And then I will ask you about the challenge next week when, I, when we do our Bible study, our small group, our one-on-one, -on -one, whatever it is. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Let's give him a big uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Pastors, is this clear? Uh, give me a, a time for one or two reactions, and then I'll, I'm going to close with a challenge today. Pastors, we go to you online. Uh, reactions to this way of teaching and discipling through a Bible study? I'm going to ask you students too what your reaction is. Who are we coming to? Pastor Art. Pastor Art, please, go ahead. Pastor Art, Pastor Art. For me, in order to know how to conduct proper discipling. I, I missed the first part of your sentence. What did you say? It is beneficial for me, personally, in order to know how to conduct proper discipling. Mm. Good. Uh-oh. We just lost you. What do you think happened? We can, they're still hearing? Okay. 
Okay, so we lost the sight of you, but we're still going. <clears throat> so uh, students, let's keep going. Students, what's your reaction to this? And you can say good or bad or whatever. Uh, what's your impression of teaching the Word of God, discipling people, using all of these ways of learning? So uh, the floor is open. I'm going to take one or two reactions. Oh, you have one here online? Oh, online first and then to students. Okay, which one? Any more reactions, pastors? Pastor Jade Hintai. Pastor what? Yeah. Okay. Okay, pastor. Pastor Jade, kayo na po. Okay. Uh, to tell you honestly, um, I've been practicing a different way of keeping Bible study and how to disciple our church members and even the non-Adventists. But this time, it's a tremendous blessing for me because um, the way of, of uh, trying to motivate in a different way, it's actually coming out of the box. It's not traditional, and I'm so thankful for this tremendous and benefits of uh, learning from Pastor Don. I'm so blessed, in fact. And this way that I would also would like to to practice and even to 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 disciple other members of the church to do this the same, because uh, for us in the old uh, uh, school of thoughts about discipleships and giving Bible study, it's more traditional rather than what you are trying to convey to us. It's so profound. So profound, and thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you. For Did you sharing. hear me? Pastor, yes, thank you for sharing. We're going to go now to uh, two students, and we have a student maybe over here. Okay, our secretary is going to tell us. Okay, so um, helping out with leading a small group, mm -hmm. um, this method gets me out of my comfort zone, and... Uh, we have really neglected the f number four part, that one. Yes. We never really ch challenge our group. Uh -huh. We let them go, just mm -hmm. go. And then it reminds us to, in every small group discussion, to put Jesus at the center of the study. So mm. it's just a wow for me. Amen. Praise God. Any other student? We'll take another one. What's your reaction to what you've learned this morning? And then pastors, I'm coming back to you for one or two last ones. Okay, yes ma'am. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity, Pastor, to thank you personally because um, this method is very engaging. Mm -hmm. It makes us, as I, I've been observing how it will flow, mm -hmm. it's more active than passive. It's yeah. not just spoon feeding these people that we're gonna, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, train, but it's making them do it themselves. And yeah. as we know in the pyramid of learning, you will have retention more when you do it rather than just sitting down and listening. Amen. Amen. Anybody on this side? Then I'm going to the pastors. A hand over here. So as, as I learned these things, I was so blessed that I attended this training and learned that one so that other people like learners, like us learners, might also know, know how, why, and what what if in the things that um, they will learn in our teaching about teaching about the Bible, not just how or not just why. And I was so blessed that um, every learner can participate and can cooperate yeah. with the teachings. Amen. Thank you. And pastors, now back to you. Uh, final reactions, and then I'm going to give you a challenge uh, for all of us online and here. Um, Pastor, any responses from the pastors? Do we have a hand? Pastor Sam Ilagan. Okay, Pastor. <laughs> Go, Pastor Ilagan. We're coming to you. We're coming to you. Uh, Pastor 
Pastor Barcoma. Uh, Pastor Don, we are very thankful that you come over. So praise God. So you know, in in learning process, there are four uh, learning process. In order to connect with the student, first you need to communicate with the student. You need to demonstrate your knowledge, and you need to dom uh, motivate the student and set a high expectation. So in this four quadrant, I learned so much. Because in our old school of learning, sometimes we use the first count quad quadrant, sometimes uh, third or fourth or second. But in our new school of learning of discipleship, we will use this four quadrant in order to, to impart knowledge in, in, as far as discipleship is concerned. So you impart uh, to communicate. You need to communicate with the student. You need to demonstrate your knowledge you earn from Christ. And you need to motivate them to follow uh, what, uh, uh, what level of, of difficulty you have learned uh, your journey in Christ. And, and lastly, uh, set an example or set high expectation. If he accept this challenge, a uh, blessing will come to him. So thank Praise you very God. much, Pastor Don. Praise God. I'll take one more response and then I'll conclude. Just short, a short response. Anybody, any other pastor? I see the pastor. Hold up. Pastor, go ahead. We're coming no, to you. No, no. We see Pastor Ilagan again. Okay. For this uh, uh, strategy, how to organize the care group and how to entertain them in our church. This uh, quadrant strategy is a complete package for our church, especially in the minimum uh, size of members of our church in Cavite. And as I apply this uh, presently in my family, we are now uh, 11 in our house. So hmm. one of the young people here is really uh, inspired to continue her is uh, studying as theologian student there and at AUP. Thank you so much, Pastor Don. God bless you. You are most welcome. Praise the Lord. My friends, our time has come to a conclusion. I've gone over. Please forgive me, uh, pastors and local people, for going over. Uh, let's give a thank you to our secretary. Thank you very much for a beautiful job. Let's give her a hand. I would encourage you before you walk out to take a picture of this. It's, it's done in a very lovely way. And it'll give you something you can actually go out and try. And uh, to our local pastors, uh, to our local uh, students and faculty, to our online audience, you have been a great joy to be with. Uh, we have just started a training called The Call of Elijah. And we have only covered probably 10 or 15% of a training. Unless if uh, something happens, this will be the last session I can do while I'm in the Philippines. But I hope that this has given you something practical that you can do now in the end of time. Not just spoon feeding, but giving you something, a tool, you can wrestle with and live in your own life. I'm asking you in Jesus' name to take these principles and first of all, live them in your own life. Pastors, students, faculty, invite Jesus tonight and every night until he comes again to wake you up so that he's in charge. Crown him king. Make him the Lord of your life first thing every morning, not some mornings, every morning. <laughs> Go to the word of God looking for Jesus and have the thrill, the deep thrill, the passion of finding something fresh with Jesus Christ every single day of your life. Pastors, this changes the way we preach. It changes the way we teach. Students, it changes the way you preach and teach and lead to have a fresh picture of Jesus. Some of us have been preaching and teaching an old picture of Jesus that we got too long ago 
and we've not updated it by being in the Word this morning looking for a fresh picture of Jesus. This morning in the Word of God, the Spirit of God awakened me and He took me to Revelation 12. And I close this way. Revelation 12. Go there with me. Pastors online, my friends right here. Go with me to Revelation 12. I got on my knees after I surrendered to Jesus Christ and I said, God, I said, after such a crazy night with all this flight stuff, I need to have something for my heart today. And, I, and he gave me many things from the word. Unrushed time with Jesus. And he's been my strength today, even with a few hours of sleep. Revelation 12, verse 10. As soon as you're there, then please put your thumbs up, pastors. <clears throat> and here, I want to make sure we're together. Revelation 12, verse 10. Here I read, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, <clears throat> Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. It's not something in the past. It's not something way off in the future. This reality, rea the realities of the fact that the salvation, the power, the kingdom of our God and authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down, past. Satan is defeated. We still have battles, but the war has been won on the cross. We must live that way in the way we disciple others, that Satan is a defeated foe. He who, who accuses them before our God day and night, and they overcame him, meaning Satan, because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even when faced with death. Jesus, I asked him this morning on my knees, what are you telling me about yourself? And as I examined this, using this principle right here, he whispered to me through the power of the Holy Spirit, Don, notice the word of God. He said to me that, again, he has, his authority has come already. It's present. His authority is here. And then he also whispered to me, Don, to the, you know, the Holy Spirit whispers to our heart. Are we together? And he said, Don, notice verse 11. You are to overcome Satan because of my blood of the Lamb. And he reminded me this morning that the victory of Jesus on the cross when he shed his blood for me is to be my victory and it's to be your victory every single day. So pastors and administrators, students and faculty, let us go forward day after day in this end of time, first having our own appointment with Jesus Christ, knowing him as a living God who has all authority, who, who has always, already won the victory, had triumph. Let us live each day in the victory of Jesus Christ. And let us go forward making disciples who not only know about Jesus, but they live for Jesus. And they know the victory and the power of the resurrected Jesus Christ. If you and I do not know his power personally, we will not disciple others to know his power. So know his power and live his power. Live his word and teach his, his children of all ages to do likewise. May God bless you and keep you. Let's stand. And Pastor Israel, would you send us out with a blessing, please? Let's stand together and in your homes, pastors, let's stand right where we are before the Lord as he sends us out with a blessing. Father God, we are so grateful, dear Lord, for this wonderful and powerful preaching of Pastor Lord this morning. He has taught us how to disciple properly and we ask, dear Lord, that you please empower us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to have a greater need of reading your word and be inspired and refreshed of your power. Father God, we believe that you have already won the victory. And so help us to be victorious in our own battle. Help us to reflect the power, the love, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
through the written word. So that as we disciple people, we will be able to demonstrate the power of the Lord in our daily living and gain more souls for the kingdom. I pray, Father, that you please take care of each and every one of us. Please take care of Pastor Don. Whatever is the situation, please hold him tight yeah. and help him to arrive safe and sound to his family tomorrow. Father God, I pray that you please sustain him with your grace and sustain mm -hmm. us all with your love. For we ask this in the mighty and precious name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 God bless you all and keep you. And let's wave to our pastor friends. Let's wave. God bless you. Amen and amen. Okay, I have here two pieces of papers. I mean, they both have the same uh, purpose. So uh, for, being a part of for those in this area, I'll give this to you. You write your name there. Oh, sorry. Uh, contact and email, and then this one and the other on, on my left side. Okay. So that we'll send you the 13 questions, uh, discipleship questions. Reminder, uh, the cafeteria closes at 1 o'clock. Can I understand it? Can, it can be a temptation, it can be a distraction.